Hey everyone, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com and today I'm going to show you how to stylize your edit in Adobe Premiere Pro using flash transitions. Now before we go anywhere, go ahead and check the link in the description right now and grab yourself a handful of free 4K flash transitions. That's right, this doesn't uh, require you to own anything or buy anything. Just go ahead and download those flash transitions real quick so you can follow along with us. All right, now these flash transitions are exactly what they are. They're flash transitions. They were shot in camera. They're real lights. They're not computer generated. I shot these on the Red Epic camera in our studio. And uh, you can actually see these on famous um, singing shows, talent shows, the news, wedding videos, corporate videos, all kinds of different things. I've seen, I've seen these in music videos. They were designed because a lot of my friends did not have unique transitions that they could reuse over and over again in their edits. So that's basically what it is. Now, Let's jump into Premiere Pro, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, I'm using Premiere Pro because it's my editor of choice, but you do not need a, a Premiere Pro for any of our products. Um, like all the products we make here at Rampant, everything is QuickTime based, so it works in all editors and compositors. As long as you can bring a QuickTime movie into your editor you can or your compositor, you can use our content. All right, so what is what are these things? Well, they're not traditional transitions in the sense that I pull down an effect or I right click and I say add transition or anything like that. What they are is QuickTime movies. So you drag them from your bin to your timeline, like so, and you put them over your footage. It's pretty simple, just like all of our, all of our content. So let me just show you real quick uh, some of the, uh, the scenes I have set up here, uh, for example. All right, so we've got a, a fashion or a family kind of edit, something you'll see from a grocery store or a bank or something like that, or a, a, a clothing store or something, you know, family oriented. And this is this quick, nice pop of color and light, and boom, you're on to the next shot. Uh, this is real simple to accomplish. So let's start with this right here. We'll go back to that scene, this exact same scene, but without the transitions. All right, so how do these work if they're quick times? Because we get a lot of people going, well, but they're not transitions. Well, sure they are. They're just not, you, they're not implemented in the traditional sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to these free transitions that I'm giving away here, 4K, and I'm going to pick clip number 89 here. That's this right here. Pull it up. We'll hit play. It's this real pretty pink and orange and yellow. It uh, flashes from the center out. Now, these are 4K, much larger than my 1080 shot. So I have a lot of room to, to expand, uh, contract, and reposition these files if I want. So I can, if I like something a little bit more about the flash or a little more better about the flash, um, that was a joke. I'm not really saying more better. Uh, if I want something, if I like something uh, about the scene, uh, or excuse me, about the shot a little bit more than, than another aspect of the shot, I can reposition it or scale. No big deal. So what we do is there's a couple ways you can do this. You can scrub through and find the, the whitest or the hottest part of the shot right here, which is this, and you can click mark in and then just drag your clip right over your shot. So that way you know at this point, this is the hottest part of your shot, so you know that this is the best place to make the transition uh, from one to the other or cover the cut. That's basically what you're doing. You're, it is a transition, but you're masking the cuts. So then all you do is just peel the, the clip back like that, peel the shot back, and uh, you've covered the shot. Now, like most of our QuickTime elements, well, hey, wait a second, I don't see the shot. That's because we need to change the blend mode. So double click on the clip, go to effects controls, and under opacity, twirl that down, and change the blend mode from normal to screen. You can also use linear dodge add or any of these other blend modes, but uh, I'm gonna use screen for this particular example. So let's roll back and play through. See, you get this really great organic flash. It's not a uh, typical like dip to white or anything like that. It has color, it's real light, and so it behaves like real light does. It's not static. You can also speed the shot up if you want, if it's too long. But um, notice, I, I dragged this on natively so it's in its, it's in its native file size. So that means this is a 4K clip. So notice how it's a lot more white and a lot less color. If you like that, awesome. If you want more of the color, which is seen more on the edges of the shot, if we double click on the shot over here, see you notice more of the color around the edges of the shot and then the edges of the frame, just go ahead and right click and click scale to frame size. This will bring it things down to the same size as my edit, which in this case is 1080p. So. Now you see how the flash is more centered in the shot. And if you want something in between, just go ahead and hit scale to frame size, turn it back to its normal 4K size, double click on the effect, double click on the clip, go over to effects controls, and twirl down motion. And now you can just adjust the scale. See, so if you're like, well, that's a little too much in there you go. So you can adjust how much of the color versus the flash you want because these are 4K. 
All right. So uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that back at 100. And I'm just going to go ahead and right click and hit uh, scale to frame size. So without all my yapping, it takes two seconds to do this. Let's do this again. Let's keep moving forward here on this edit so we can finish the shot, make the director happy, and keep on trucking here. So I'm going to use clip number 94, which is another clip that has pink in it because uh, for this particular edit, I don't want to change the colors. You can. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but this has this nice movement from left to right. So I'm going to go ahead and the same thing. I'm going to find my white flash. I'm going to mark in, I'm going to drag it over my clip right at the edit, and then I'm going to peel the clip back. Now, just like all the other tutorials that you see with that we create, you can constantly keep going back, double clicking on the element, hitting effect controls, twirling down, twirling down opacity, turning normal to screen. It's not that big a deal and it works. See, great. Or if I undo all that, we'll go back to normal. I can go back to my original element, which is right here, click on it, click on effects controls, highlight opacity and copy it, and then highlight my new clip and hit paste. Now the blending mode that I used on clip one is the same as clip two, and I don't have to keep going back to the effects, pa the effects panel. So that's one method of adding the flash to your shot. Now what if you're like, well, I just don't like having to do that thing where I mark in, it's so much work clicking, and oh man, I just I clicked like three times, it's just too much. Okay, no, no problem, you know. I'm, I'm not gonna tell you how to work, it's all good. So let's go ahead and get rid of this clip and pull clip 94 back into the timeline. Make sure it's endpoint is set back here. So I have not set an endpoint, right? I'm just going to go ahead and drag the clip into the timeline here, right? No problem. All right, turn snapping off. And then now you can just kind of organically play. Go ahead and hit paste so you can see through the shot. So you can apply the blend mode. And now let's just organically play. See, I didn't even line it up. And that kind of works pretty cool. So you don't really have to be so technical about it. You know, but you can absolutely, you know, move things around, zoom in here so you get a better look, and just without snapping turned on, so you're not clicking on, you're not uh, being locked to this edit here, and just kind of organically play until you get the feel you're looking for. See, that worked too. Or you can do it uh, sooner than later. Well, that's probably not enough because you saw one little hint of the last shot, so let's dial it back. See, there you go. So. Those are two different, two independent ways of, of manipulating the transitions. You can just throw it on the timeline and move it around until you get what you like, or you can do it the more technical way where you find the, the transition frame that you like, like right there, mark your endpoint, drag it in over the cut, and then peel the clip back. But all in all, two seconds worth of work and you've got yourself a really cool transition. So let's do this one more time. Like all of our effects, you can do this once, you can do this a thousand times. I'm just showing you the, the many different looks and feels of these clips. You really don't need to go any further than this. Um, so I could say goodbye and I love you guys, but uh, I'm not going to just yet. I do love you. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, so let's take a look at this fashion piece. It's cool. You got some, you know, some cool stuff going on. It, it just needs some spice. So let's, um, I don't know, let's go over here. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I really like that one. This one's got that purple and orange and blue thing going on. I really dig it. So let's go ahead and drag that over this shot right here. And I'm just going to guess where it goes. And again, I'm going to hit paste so I can copy my blend mode settings from the original clip. Wow, that's pretty cool. And as you saw, I'd, there's no way on earth that I would have known where to drag it exactly. That's not possible. But that's the flexibility of these organic shots. They're not so rigid. It's not like in exactly seven frames you will have a transition. It's not like that. It's, it's very much more organic. So because it's organic, you have some leeway to play. So just by dropping it on the timeline right over the cut, that happened to work. Now, if I'm not happy with that exact thing, or if you have a director who you, know, who you work with, which I have, who's come in and said, I need you to uh, change all the transitions and cuts by three frames, well, you got to do what you got to do. So even though this is really close, just by chance, we can slide, slide, slippity slide, and get where you want it to go. See, there you go. Just a few frames over, and it still works. Or just like before, I can erase that clip and go back to the shot. Here it is. Double click. And I can find a, a place in the shot that I want to use as my transition point. So this right here is pretty darn close. And remember, this is 4K, so this is much, much larger than 1080p. Mark my endpoint, drag the clip over my edit, boom. Make sure to hit paste so I can actually see the blend. And 
then just peel the clip back. Boom. So it's that simple. You drag the clip from your bin to your timeline, you put it over the edit, you switch the blend mode from normal to screen, and you're done, you're good to go. So that's about it. I can show you uh, another quick example for those of you who just really want to see one more example of how these things, are, these things work out. I'm going to use this clip right here, clip number 65, which is also one of the freebies that you get. Nice cool golden color here. And I'm going to use the first technique. I found a flash frame, a full transition frame, mark my endpoint, put it over the edit, and boom, peel it back, hit paste so it blends. And you, you see this effect on all these kinds of singing shows and talent shows, especially right now in the summer. There's a lot of them. So, um, you know, check out your favorite talent show and you'll probably see this stuff. So that's about it. Those are flash transitions. Here's a bunch more examples of all kinds of different uses and different colors. If you like what you see, I shot 150 of these. They're super, super simple to use. They work in all different kinds of edit software. Um, right now I know Final Cut Steph is working on a tutorial for how to use these in Final Cut Pro. But again, as always, if your software of choice is not being used in a tutorial and you want to see it in use, go ahead and leave a comment and we'll get to it. If you like what you see here and you want to grab more flash transitions, head on over to rampantdesigntools.com. That's our company right here and uh, scroll on down to Studio Flash Transitions. That's right here. Click on that. And you can buy the product from this page. Uh, I shot it on a red Epic camera, so it's available in 2K, 4K, or 5K. These are real, these are not generated. And you can download it right away, or uh, you can get it on a USB 3.0 hard drive, however you'd like to grab it. And so if you liked the free ones we gave you, we have 150 more right, right here that you can use in your edits, and they're royalty free. You can use them as many times as you want in any projects that you like. So uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or tutorial requests, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter at Rampant Design or check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash rampantmedia. And of course, you can find more tutorials at rampantdesigntools.com. Until next time, I'm Sean Mullen for Rampant Design. Thanks for watching.